here with uh, Hannah Irwin in uh, Stratford at the Olympic Park. Hannah, obviously a place here which has so many memories uh, down the years. I, I guess starting off, kind of, what's your journey like? You've been like in athletics because you mentioned earlier that you've had quite a few injuries and that you've had to yeah. come back from them, but you've had some pretty stellar wins over the past few weeks as well. How's that journey been for you? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, I have, yeah, as you say, had quite a few injuries in the past couple of years, but I always feel like you can only see injuries as positive and I think they have been opportunities for me and so far I've come back from the injuries I've had stronger and I think I will again from this one. So especially being here as well, like it just inspires you to know that you can come back from injuries and achieve great things. So hopefully I will. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't really know much about you, can you explain kind of more about that timeline, that process of injuries? You had the fractured metatarsal kind of around the Commonwealth Games, yeah. but then you've had a few since then as well. Yeah, so I got fresh fractured my metatarsal the day before the Commonwealth Games. Um, I still decided to run, which I don't know if that was a sensible idea or not. Um, <laughs> So then I had to come back from that one and I was out for quite a long time with that, maybe like six months and then got back into racing and I was able to have a good summer last year and I sort of was able to rewrite all my PB so I felt in a really strong place. Um, but then sadly around Christmas time, I picked up a like grade three stress reaction in my tibia. Um, so I've sort of had to have more time off and I'm coming back from that now. And I feel in a good like fitness place now and um, I'm back to racing so hopefully I have another good summer. How has that process been for you both well physically obviously but mentally as well because so many athletes will have injuries within their career but you mentioned it's just about staying positive day and day that consistency. Yeah I think being positive and like seeing the bigger picture is what you need to do because it doesn't change it it's not going to speed up and it's not going to go away so you can only look at your situation and see like how what can you take from that to be able to come back better because injuries do happen for a reason so if you can figure out where you've been going wrong you're only going to benefit from them and the last few months have been you know pretty good for you you've had wins uh, you know, in wales quite recently can you explain more about them and kind of what confidence that gives you ahead of what is arguably, arguably going to be a pretty packed summer? Yeah, no, it gives me a lot of confidence because my training still had been quite minimal going into that and I'd only done, from my race two weeks ago, I'd only done four weeks of sessions since I'd got back to training. So to know that I still had a lot of fitness there of quite minimal training volume um, has given me a lot of like confidence and I know that I've got a lot more I can do so hopefully we'll take some more bigger steps this summer. And you mentioned you know the British trials you're going to be competing all being well over the 5,000 uh, meters is that your preferred distance I mean where are you with the distances right now? Yeah no my strength definitely lies over the longer the distance um, I prefer like half marathon and I think one day my strength will definitely be in the marathon but I just need to get a bit more robust and in that time I feel I have got a lot more to give over the 5k and the 10k um, so that's sort of my focus for now and then in the years to come I will definitely go up and think that's where I'll be best. And just on that so when, when you've seen you know some of the girls I think we've had six British you know women obviously the marathon teams have been picked but six British women got the qualifying standards yeah. a lot of them had a track career before that then they went to the road to 10k yeah. and then went to the marathon like how inspiring is that for you that you know you can follow in the footsteps of them but they've shown it is more than possible yeah massively no massively inspiring and i think it's interesting to see and also more inspiring to see like the three women especially who have been selected for paris how different their backgrounds are yeah like some like Callie has super super fast 5k and even shorter and then you know some of the others have had more of their strength has been like solely in the longer distances and I think it's just inspiring to know that whatever background you do come from you can run a great marathon and run a fast one as well. So for anyone who doesn't really know you too well could you explain more about how you got into the sports kind of the inspirations that you had growing up and I guess obviously being in the Olympic Park kind of you know London 2012 and, and kind of how that impacted on you as well. Yeah so I started running when I was six years old so quite young um, and I was inspired by a school teacher like she just fat, like was running made her so happy and I wanted to experience that and I think when you're naturally quite good at something as well from a young age it just reinforces that you want to do it so that's why I got into it and then definitely like going to watch the Olympics and have the Olympics here and all the hype like it just allowed you to see what is possible and what people who are you know just other human beings can achieve and 
and I hope one day I can go on to compete at Olympics. And were there any athletes kind of growing up that inspired you uh, kind of generally? Or? Yeah, I think whilst not necessarily in my event, um, Jessica Ennis was definitely a big inspiration to me. Um, I think also she's like such a home person and I'm a home person as well. So to see what she could achieve, you know, of being in like Sheffield shows that you doesn't matter where you are, um, if you're happy and enjoy your training, you can achieve a lot. And are, are, are there any moments in your life where you can have looked back and go, actually, wow, I can't believe kind of where where I am as an athlete. You know, you competed yeah. at the Commonwealth Games. Kind of a, I, I guess every person in their life goes through moments where they doubt themselves mm -hmm. and you know they have dark times. Are you able to kind of reflect on anything that you've had, for example, and you you know on the start line? I know it didn't work out, but on the start line at the Commonwealth Games, you know, Northern Ireland record holder over the half marathon and, and more so as well. I mean, it's a pretty inspiring story. Oh, thank you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even a year prior to the Commonwealth Games, I didn't necessarily, you know, see myself as being able to be there the following year. And I think as time went on, I realised I could achieve more than I thought I could. Um, and it is definitely, you look back and you see how far you've come and it's easy to be where you are now and see how much further you want to go. But it's always good to look back and realise that actually, you know, if you believe in something, I think you can achieve whatever you set out to achieve. And just finishing off then, um, you mentioned about the British trials earlier on. What other kind of events have you got coming up this summer and what are your kind of big goals for 2024 in general? Yeah, so I'm going to do the 5K at British Champs and I'm also then going to do the on-track meet in Paris over the 5K. And I think after that, I'm just going to see a little bit how those races go to dictate what I then do. But I'd like to end the season on another half um, and hopefully have a good run at that as well. And the last thing I've got to mention, actually, the impact of Mizuno as a, as a sponsor and the, the, what they've done for you. I know yeah. you've got Holly, Holly Bradshaw as well as an athlete yeah. with them and, and kind of like, it's a small portfolio, but it seems they do a hell of a lot for you. You. Yeah, I mean, I've been with Mizuno for about five years now and I wouldn't want to be with another brand. Like through my injuries and stuff, they could have so easily, you know, not supported me, but they've continued to support me through that. And they see my dreams as much as I do and they understand them. So I wouldn't want to be with another brand because they are extremely supportive. And being kind of doing, you know, helping, I was on the run earlier on today with the new Neo Vista shoe, kind of what's the impact of kind of that but also the inclusivity the community part of running that is so important as well yeah definitely and i think that's where the neo vista is great is it is a very like communal shoe that can target people you know no what matter what level of running you are at um and i think that is a great thing that also indicates what mizuno is about like just bringing everyone together and allowing everyone to achieve their full potential perfect hannah we'll leave it there thanks so much